we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. I mean, we can certainly, you know, talk to some of this. Uh, I think that, um, you know, one of the one of the things that came out of this, and we'll get the, this slide up here in a minute, is uh, 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 what we call the the kids portal um, for collaboration. And what what this was is we built a tumor board portal um, specifically for this project. And part of what why we did that is because at the time we started doing this, there was a huge need uh, to actually have a platform where folks could collaborate around these, some of these uh, uh, kids' uh, tumors because primarily it's around neuroblastoma. And, and as you may be aware, it's a, something where there's, you know, expertise is kind of spread out among uh, a fairly, a fairly uh, a large, you know, part of the, of the, of the planet geographically. So, you know, what was happening is that people were running portals, but they were using things like Zoom or WebEx. And as you can see, that's sometimes suboptimal uh, for doing some of these things. Not to mention, you, you also tend to lose a lot of the artifacts that are created through through these processes. So, you know, we, we designed and built this system for clinicians and, and others to collaborate as well as keep that data in an organized system so that we could actually go back and look at results uh, and, and different treatment options that have been prescribed uh, in the past. So today, do you want to see if you go to the next slide? slide? Yeah. All right. So, so today, we're actually uh, working with uh, Pivotal Labs to help uh, make this system more modern and better because at the time that we did it the first time uh you know it was really more of an ad hoc effort just to build a tool that would enable us to have that capability um but we wanted to go back and refactor the system in technology stacks that were more open uh, things like uh, angular and java as well as you know, build something that, that had more openness from an API and integration standpoint with an eye towards releasing a version to the community that so that more people could uh, benefit. And so hopefully we've got the kids portal collaboration with VMware Pivotal Lab slide up and, uh, you know, it has some of the, the features of this software uh, as well as other things that we're working at. I won't sit and read these all to you. Um, but, but I'd say, you know, probably one of the biggest things that we have uh, going for this is it's being developed in, in partnership with Pivotal, but also with some of our oncology folks and other clinicians. So, you know, really, you know, taking, you know, the advice and, and, and the ideas of people who are providing treatments to patients and using that, you know, to guide development of the software. So, you know, we're not developing this in a vacuum and just saying, oh, well, we think this is what, you know, an oncologist would like to see. We're, we're bringing them into it. And with uh, Pivotal Labs, you know, Agile methodologies, it's about iteration and getting things, uh, you know, getting things, uh, you know, into a, into a platform that, that can be easily accessible. So, as I mentioned, you know, we really want to put this into the open source community and we want to and we'd love the opportunity to look at integration with things like Transport I2B2 because I think that there's amazing opportunity to help build a platform that can incorporate genomics as well as uh, some of the other uh, technologies that we've developed at the back end here in TGen to, you know, help more patients because, I mean, it, it, TGen's fundamental mission is to take discoveries in the lab and translate that into treatments for patients. And so we do all of this with an eye towards that. And uh, as we get next, as we get done with our next development cycle of, of this software, probably in the next, uh, I think we're looking at two to three months being finished with that sprint, then we will be uh, looking at that open sourcing of the software uh, so I, I look forward to that. I look forward to, to working with, with the people on this call and others to, to find the best way to do that and to find the best way that we can, we can work together to, you know, adopt these tools to, to help patients. 
so then maybe go to the next slide. And I don't know if you want to take over, Nick, and maybe talk a little bit uh, about about this slide. Sure. So uh, as many people on the call know, integration is absolutely key to the success of a lot of these large uh, translational initiatives. So uh, having access to both clinical information, omics data, whether it's genomics or other omics types, and obviously outcomes is, is crucial. And this slide is just meant to convey how important this integration is and how it could be enabled with the appropriate tools and software. Um, one thing that we've been working on, in particular with uh, the studies James referred to, looking at childhood brain cancers, is trying to identify from, say, tumor sequence, what it is that could be targeted with specific treatments. So if you have a bunch of patient profiles, what you'd like to do is take, and by profile I mean genomics, clinical data, uh, legacy clinical data on the patient, et cetera, et cetera. Take that and somehow match it to drugs whose mechanisms of action are known. That's not particularly trivial, but this is a challenge for the community. And some of the legacy work that uh, Tijin has been uh, working on uh, in partnership with Dell has that in mind. So you could imagine in the future a patient coming into a clinic, they are profiled, again, omically, including genomics. Somehow a signal is detected in, in the data on that patient that is then taken to a much larger repository of data to see if those uh, signals might indicate what kind of treatment option is best for that patient. Doing that in real time is the, the, the real goal here, or doing it as uh, uh, short as time frame possible. So again, trying to develop these technologies and then bring them out there and put them out uh, for the community uh, to leverage to really facilitate uh, clinical care for everyone. So hopefully that made sense, but there's a lot of focus, again, on, on integration and bringing data together. Okay, thank you, uh, James and Nick. Uh, this is Dave Diamond, I'm picking up. So embarrassing, we've been recording this thing. I haven't been able to figure out Zoom. <laughs> So thank you for your patience also. Um, we're really, we really appreciate the opportunity Dell Technologies to, to, uh, does to have the opportunity to join your organization and uh, as a corporate sponsor and work closely with you. As you can see, some of the segue there was from our work with TGen and we got to the point and said, hey, how are we gonna scale up what we've done together for the last 10 years? What's the opportunity in having done collaborative work with Partners Healthcare, we knew quite a bit about I2B2 and having met uh, uh, Diane, I think you back in 2013 around some projects too. So I've got some, a little bit of history on here. I'm the uh, Chief Innovation Officer now for our Healthcare Life Sciences business. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later, but I'm also a distinguished engineer. So I'm looking for trouble. I'm looking for engineering challenges. And uh, if you've worked with me, you've heard me interrupt conversations, close conversations, says, you know, one thing we're really good at is solving engineering challenges. And in healthcare, there are many, um, but we just don't think about them uh, typically at the platform level. We believe that working in the I2B2 Transmart community will have the opportunity to do that. Um, I'm also involved with uh, social innovation in, um, to, you know, really identifying opportunities to demonstrate human progress. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that at the end of the presentation of uh, Canon Heil, who, uh, who's responsible for that working with us and be on the call today. So I just wanted to introduce you to the, um, the Dell Technologies family of business. Now we could put up a mentee and ask when you think of Dell, what do you, you know, what do you think about it? Well, I don't think we have to. A lot of people think about PCs and servers and storage on the EMC side, but we're actually a group of companies and I'll just kind of hit these at a high level. Uh, the Dell logo you, you'd expect to see on end user devices, and we do a fair amount of work too with OEM and very unique devices, embedded devices too. And Dell EMC, that's our what was our data center business. And we've uh, moved to the point now where much of what we used to do is now defined in software and is actually uh, more agnostic. And that's one of our fastest growing businesses. Um, What's a little bit interesting, I'll just mention this uh, as a sidebar, is we don't necessarily believe that the cloud is a place for us to be. We are more focused on multi-cloud and compatibility across um, several clouds and creating digital workspaces. 
including the ability to, uh, to access high-performance computing, storage, and several other things, integrating with uh, IoT in an elastic manner. Alienware, uh, if you've got teams, maybe they've asked you for an Alienware computer. It's one of the best gaming platforms out there, but it's, it's a great opportunity for us as we harvest all the work that's been done in gaming with, um, with, with GPUs and things, our relationship uh, with NVIDIA and other companies and Intel, and also ARVR, which we're really leading, uh, leading the industry on VMware. Um, it's, a, it's cross industry. It's not just across Dell technology platform. It's across all technology platforms, but that's a software-based company. Um, that offers up digital uh, workspace. We've done some collaborations with some organizations on that. Pivotal is Pivotal Labs. It's been around for uh, quite a long time, 10 years, uh, and under our wing for about eight of those. And it's our cloud na native application development environment and training, uh, training capability and develops a lot of open source. And SecureWorks and RSA, or SecureWorks is really focused on mitigating cyber threats and RSA is really managing digital risk. Uh, Boomi is fairly new in, in the healthcare market, but you can think about it as low code, citizen type of integration, creating what we call atoms. And we do have a fire capability, which is becoming very interesting. And VirtuStream is a purpose-built cloud, uh, a quasi-hybrid cloud environment. And it started with SAP, but we do have SAP customers and cache running in virtual stream for high performance and high availability applications. Um, just to give you some factoids too, uh, you know, we is on the innovation side, we've put twenty billion dollars collectively across these companies into R and D over the last five years. And Michael Dell has made a commitment to put at least four point five billion in per year going forward. That's pretty astonishing when you think about all these companies. With, and we've got uh, 28,000 patents we've accumulated um, and uh, 157,000 employees. Um, I'm going to give you an example of something that's fascinating with the employees is, for instance, at Dell EMC 10 years ago when I joined, you know, it was about a quarter of our employees were involved in software. We have 85% of our employees in Dell EMC that are software, full-blown software engineer. And, um, you know, they tend to be of uh, early in their career, younger generation. It's very exciting to us on the innovation side. There is also Dell Capital Ventures that currently invests $100 million in their portfolio every year and, uh, and then uh, works with right now we have a portfolio of uh, 90 startups so when you look across all is the culture code of innovation is evolving as a more formal culture code and our employees are incented uh, in this culture code to be contributors to innovation just to give you an overview of our business uh, on the market leadership side this is the healthcare informatics 100 uh, at HIMSS will be announced as the healthcare innovation 100 the key measurement for the, the uh, status and the ranking in it is by revenue. And Dell EMC is down at number seven out of 100. We've been in the top 15 for the last couple of years, and we've, we've uh, moved up quite a bit. We've got more than 30% more than growth, revenue growth, uh, exiting 2019. And I don't want to um, jinx us, but we believe we'll be up in the, the, you know, the five or six area. I'm very proud. We speak about this quite a bit. Everyone up the stack on top of us and 14 of them below are very, very close partners of us, um, with us. They either run on Dell Technologies or they're doing innovation or software development. Or we're really very formal uh, partners in um, doing customer innovations, collaborations with them. And then the little uh, area to the next of that is market leadership as far as market penetration. And there's categories in that you'd recognize um, we're in several upper right-hand quadrants of the of the uh, the Gartner categories as leaders, and leading is number one in those. <clears throat> Probably what's most important for today is I want you to realize that there's innovation collaborations that are going on, and you know there's there's one in particular called uh, digital life care, which is an impact on um, on India and going after the 37 million people in India that, uh, you know, that are in rural areas. 
Uh, it's been in the works for six years. It's uh, shifting more from a current generation data lake. It's all cloud native and it's moving more to an AI NLP environment. It's very exciting to us. You heard about the work we're doing with TGen. Um, and now TGen is uh, really a leader in our innovation portfolio. And then, uh, it, of course, I had mentioned Partners Healthcare, which has really mentored us into this area of working on what we started in 2014 as uh, a data lake, which really wasn't uh, well known what that was, um, and moved into uh, integrated data environment uh, for doing analytics, moving more towards AI, and uh, have worked on something um, you know, a data enclave for a biobank challenge that we contributed to also. Our focused areas of innovation uh, in healthcare are, tr you know, traditionally from the left to the right, it's the IT infrastructure, been there quite a long time. Um, these were what I called when we first got into as premieres, pre-MRs, all the way up to doing horizontal integration with the first IDNs. We really built our business around medical imaging packs and those workloads. Uh, and then are moving now into cloud native apps. Um, I'd say 80% of what we're focused on now is what we lump under uh, precision medicine. We do platform engineering. This is just a, a chunk of some of the logos. They're here because very close to precision medicine from that engineering challenge standpoint, very focused on sequencing um, and medical imaging and very uh, out in front of digital pathology for the last five years. We've been part of the digital pathology um, association and uh, been guiding a lot and nurturing a lot of smaller vendors. Um, for instance, IBEX is part of our Dell Capital uh, portfolio, very focused on AI augmentation um, of diagnosis and starting with prostate cancer. Fascinating company, as is Procha in digital pathology, all cloud based. Epic is in there. Um, on the credential side, 10 of the uh, Epic's 12 largest customers run uh, pretty much completely on Dell Technologies. Uh, and we're very proud of that. We've got 200 people who are focused on Epic every single day and, uh, you know, nurturing some of the largest customers in the next generation of technologies. So we've got an innovation team. Someone more on the phone today. I'll just kind of go from, you know, start about where it's really important to us to do innovation, and that's up the, out in the wild with, um, with the customers and our partners, our technology partners. So I have... Uh, you know, Team John Rees and Dave Sarson are focused on uh, being integration platform as a service. Is what John is. He's also on the IHE standards beat for quite a while, and used to build a lot of those products and go to Connectathons. Um, and then we have Dave Sarson, who's our uh, really our architect and multi-cloud market development person. Really help us shift to that software divine world and autonomously moving workloads across clouds in that agnostic way. Steve Laser is a CTO ambassador, and he really works in some of what we call the uniques. These are organizations that have something that's beyond a pilot. They're gonna do it with or without us, and we get in, particularly consortias uh, that are regional for innovation, uh, and does quite a bit of work with the Epic. That's where he developed most of his scar tissues in the early Epic environment with our products. John Collins is a veteran in emerging partnerships, uh, and he's joined our organization about three years ago, and so a lot of the logos in the Dell Capital portfolio, a lot of those new uh, initiatives in digital pathology, he's involved in clinical industry councils, and he really, in general, he knows what's going on in the market uh, very pragmatically, and he appears up with me quite a bit. Um, my my role uh, in as the innovation guy in the organization is more of a glue person. Um, but I've, I really focus on a rolling group of maybe five, five or so customers to try to get out in front, make sure we're working with them, and help orchestrate um, some of the collaborations. And so this one with I2B2 we've been talking about for about a year, um, and we look forward to doing more innovation, helping accelerate us on what we should be working on and how to have an impact um, across your foundation, your organization. Now, Kyle uh, Cannon Heil. Uh, is here today. He's going to talk about human progress and social innovation. And Andre uh, uh, Sanjay Yoshi, who um, you may know his name, he's our, our recovering scientist, he calls himself, but he's in the office of CTO, the big office of CTO, and he's out on the next horizon uh, doing uh, very free form pro projects in the wild, 
uh, working on the academic councils, and uh, he, you know, I think he's in India today, but he's a globetrotter too. This is kind of a complex slide, but I, I actually have used this quite a bit internally, explaining to our leadership just how complex healthcare is and how many dots there are. If you're familiar with a, a Gartner or hype cycle, um, on the left-hand side, there's these innovation triggers. Typically, they come from outside of the healthcare industry. Okay, and then you go to HIMSS and it's hanging on the banners. Everyone will have AI in the banner this year, or a lot of organizations will, and IoT. And then the question is really, how do we use this? And then this is kind of shake out of the hot little startup companies and the big um, consolidated conglomerate companies kind of latch on these things and integrate them. And then we start to put them into use. And our opportunity here in working with your organization, some of our collaborations with our customers, is really to look at things that we have worked on and have, have, have built, and we're looking at the next generation of technologies I have. You know, Partners logo in here, we've been working hard with them. They've been mentoring us on developing some of these bullets in here in an integrated data platform. There's so much more they've done. And then on the left-hand side, we've got TGen really starting at the computational medicine kind of meeting in the middle. If we work correctly with the I2B2 Transmart Foundation and identify some real focus areas, um, we believe we can take get out of this 10 to these five to 10 year timelines or more than 10 years, which is we think is absurd where Gartner has precision medicine and distributed ledger for blockchain um, and patient decision AI, we should be doing those together with this community within two years and be able to demonstrate that and demonstrate social innovation and human progress. And I do have, you know, some papers printed in. There's several out on our desks, but on the left-hand side, there's a digital twin, which presents some real engineering challenges, and a very recent paper um, on FECAP, which is of great interest to us. We wouldn't have been reading about this uh, if it weren't for our collaborations with our, with our customers. So, we're going to talk about human progress and how we make that measurable uh, in social innovation. And some things very measurable is to be able to do it in a disease-specific manner and be able to do it in a tangible way um, where we can uh, put our expertise into play. We are excel in the industry at uh, managing uh, the temperature, the uh, gravity of large uh, data objects, uh, we've acquired big data companies and technologies are heavily involved in the open source environment standards. We're doing IoT and have committed more than a billion dollars to just IoT R&D. And those are areas, and I use the brain disorders and disease as an example. Um, the thing that's personal to me is that 50 million people have epilepsy worldwide. There's a great opportunity with pediatric epilepsy to get out front. I have epilepsy, uh, and I'm very close to that. I'm a, an advocate for it. Any executive sponsor in this case would be for actual projects in this area. On the right-hand side, in the partner alignment, you see uh, some logos up there. And those are the ones that we're working with right now in doing joint development or startup or, um, you know, a lot of standards development in the market work uh, in these areas, such as uh, patient-centered research and engaging patients and this concept of a digital medical, uh, medical twin. Left, the left-hand side, we have engineering challenges. There's a great little diagram there, the pinwheel diagram with all the data sizes, which comes from Nick, um, that I've, I've adaptive, uh, adapted. And I've laid out the engineering challenges on the side. And some of the things that hit home is how do you do this across multiple clouds? Um, what's the governance of the data? How do you make sure it's reproducible, what the data provenance is? And how do you keep confidence in this data, which is constantly moving? And the things I throw is you can, you know, you got to be concerned about the sprawl of algorithms, the the chaos of doing cloud native applications, and having a you know cluttered code from a lot of uh, you know cloud development, cloud native development that's happened across your research organizations, and the kind of the hallmark for executing on this uh, in not just in brain disorders and uh, neurodegenerative disease, but in, we hope in the future in several areas is with I2B2 Transmit Foundation. It's the focus of how we will execute in the market and to lend our, some of our knowledge and involvement in these standards groups. One we're very interested in is the Research Data Alliance. It's a very large organization for open and fair data, and we're just start, we've just been invited to that, and that's something we think 
can contribute, the uh, GA4GH. We were the first commercial partner invited to that uh, at its formation for security and privacy. So we were involved in that too. So we want to shift gears here. And I, when I spoke with Rudy and uh, Diane at the very beginning and talked about some of our credentials, um, I wanted to make sure that we wouldn't just be in here as a, a corporate sponsor, as an observer, but that we wanted to be in a place where we could have a very meaningful contribution. And here's a, a, an impact challenge and actually some citations from Michael Dell about AI. And it is, it is the future of our company and, and most industries. And what we would like to do is to work with your organization to figure out how do we um, accelerate that and mature it in healthcare. And I have here as an example of uh, this is AI. If you look at a mature industry, a retail industry, financial services, you know, oil and gas, uh, whatever industry is, this is uh, the fabric, the tapestry of what you need to do AI at scale. And um, there's only 10 nuggets in there that would be AI that we recognize. So we don't, this is something that I just put up here uh, to, to kind of make the, um, the case that you know, a year from now or five years from now, will we recognize things in here? Will it be a different way of doing things? And because healthcare is somewhat laggard, be somewhat of a laggard, and I appear innovation officers in different industries um, with common innovation teams and interlocks with the CTO. This is just something there. One thing that we're very focused on is decreasing the complexity and putting appliances in. We have a ready, a ready platforms for different things. We're working on one right now. Um, with Partners Healthcare for Precision Health Enablement. Um, these are literally uh, appliance-like uh, capabilities that plug into the cloud, and they would have inside a lot of the open source technologies, all the AI technology and ability to scale those up. We have a kind of a vision of how to offer those up into, um, you know, into nodes for cross-organization collaborations, multi-cloud collaborations and also how to integrate them with IoT and what we call pods. So there's a lot there, but it was really the, the big scary diagram to say, how do we do something, make it simple, consolidate it, um, make it much more composite for what we think the I2B2 Foundation would want to do. And I kind of like to open this up. Um, these are some examples, just kind of raw examples. James and I, Nick had talked about as areas where we could help maybe charter and contribute and be part of a working group, um, which we would want uh, to get uh, started. And, you know, from some discussions, these are some looking from the outside in. Uh, we would love to know, maybe do some ad hoc focus groups. This Mente application is a good, easy way to do it, but to understand how we could support um, and lend our knowledge of AI and our, uh, our you know, maniacal focus on healthcare, maybe inventory some projects. Um, start thinking about how to describe to us as an organization, several other organizations, what is a common taxonomy and how can we leverage our relationships with the big tech AI companies, IoT companies to provide their roadmaps, which is very happy to do and do some mentoring or training. We do have an AI innovation center and a group, an excellent set of capabilities we've worked with McGill on um, a lot of uh, brain research. They have the Healthy Brain, Healthy Lives Initiative. They actually have um, the Big Brain. If you go to bigbrain.org, you'll see that. You can actually take a look at that. And then we have bold moves. One is Digital Twin, and the other is uh, Graph Knowledge Database, kind of what we see as uh, augmenting or, or not replacing uh, the EMRs, but becoming something substantial. And those are in the office of CTO, they are not just healthcare things, um, but those are things maybe we can work on some projects and commit together. And I ask, you know, Nick, if you have some ideas, because you've done some work in this area, and then, uh, you know, open mic, if we have some people throw it out, or however, Rudy and Diane, you want to facilitate this. So Nick, do you want to pile oh, okay. on yeah, a little? I didn't know if you're yeah. Go. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I, it's clear, again, this topic came up before about integration. Uh, clearly, to leverage AI, you need very large data sets. Uh, using advanced statistical techniques and whatnot is doable with smaller data sets, but uh, AI, especially deep learning, we need large data sets. So 
how could we pull together data sets large enough to leverage AI to incorporate whatever we discover from the application of AI into something that's more patient-centric. So my guess is that's going to mean uh, pulling together data sets that are in the public domain to complement the sorts of things we could build with uh, the, the platforms of Transmart and I2V2. For example, if we have a patient's genome and we want to compare it to other genomes, there's plenty out there in different data sets that we'd have to aggregate together. So we'd need to make sure we could appropriately harmonize the data, uh, put it together, and then mine it so we could pick up a nugget from that aggregated data that might be relevant to any one particular patient. So, you know, data sets like the TCGA and the Cancer Commons uh, data that uh, was recently published, uh, other molecular databases, I'm just throwing these out here, you know, GTEx and GEO that we might have to pull relevant information from. So I see this as not only trying to develop a local infrastructure, but also reaching out into other databases and pulling out, again, the important pieces of information that we'd want to bring together uh, to make claims about whatever it is that we think would be useful for a physician to leverage for any one particular patient. So uh, again, bringing together data that is currently out there and, and building up is going to be huge. In terms of the types of techniques we could bring to the table, again, I was trying to draw a distinction between you know, what people are reading about in nature and deep mind, deep learning versus what I'm referring to as just advanced statistical techniques. And, you know, there are subtle, if not overt differences. So it might be good to have representatives from the different specialty areas in, in AI come together uh, or what we're lumping under the umbrella uh, of AI. So not just the deep learning people, but the machine learning people and the advanced kind of statistical analysis people. I think that would be important. I also think trying to define goals. So again, if we believe that by bringing data together, we could make claims about what might be relevant to the care of any one particular patient, then that project looks much different than, say, just one devoted to aggregating data so that it could be mined with the potential to help future patients. So the kind of real-time aspect of a project, I think, will distinguish it from sort of the behind the scenes, let's pull data together and discover things, right? Those are two kind of very separate uh, uh, types of initiatives. And we should probably define, as, as Dave pointed out, just where we want to go with some of this. So those are thoughts. I, I mean, I could keep going on forever, but I'll open it up to, to others. But there's many ways I think we could form a group, identify uh, some initial initiatives, uh, pursue them, and expand things over time. Thank you, Nick. And I, I had asked uh, Dr. Sean Murphy if he could, uh, you know, speak up on this too, Sean. Maybe Sean's not out there. or So maybe we can just keep going. Um, Diane, do you have, want to call on anyone, or Rudy, or comments on this? I know we're going to do a mentee on it too. Yeah, just logistically, I got a mentee set up after you're finished with your deck. Okay. So sorry. Great. Just, so, we'll, yeah. so we can do that. I think um, now, now Ken Heil is going to speak about Dell Technologies and progress made real. Uh, hello. Um, we are uh, we're honored to be a part of this uh, and look forward to the things that we'll be able to partner on and support. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, what I thought we, I would do is provide a little bit of a backdrop of where social innovation from Dell Technologies' point of view is coming from. So, so what are we thinking and, and where this fits in? Uh, and then um, happy to answer any questions that come out of that. So a couple of months ago, uh, we announced our next generation or next decade goals um, around progress made real. Uh, and this is really where we're focused on areas we feel are critical to creating a positive social impact. Uh, there's four key buckets that we're focused on here, uh, advancing sustainability, cultivating inclusion, upholding ethics and privacy. And where uh, the I2B2 Transmart partnership fits in is within the transforming lives uh, pillar. Uh, which is what I lead. We have aggressive goals around each of these um, buckets, and uh, specifically for the transforming lives, we have a goal for 2030. We want to impact a billion people in an enduring and meaningful way over the next 10 years. And those will focus in three key areas of healthcare, um, 
education and economic opportunity. And so if you go to the next slide, I'll, I'll double click in to the Transforming Lives bucket. Within this, there's three pillars that we're focused on, um, and social innovation is one of them. The other two is focused around corporate giving and employee empowerment. Um, but what uh, the primary place that we see I2B2 fitting in is within social innovation. And there's three ways we're looking at driving social innovation and evolving that um, into a social enterprise operating model. Uh, the first is um, with a, a kind of a general understanding that we would like to take Dell's technology scale and technology portfolio that Dave highlighted in, in the initial part of the meeting and find ways to put that to work to drive uh, social change and improvement at scale. The middle column here speaks to one of the key ways we would like to do that is through what we're calling societal platforms. Um, and in a sense, this is, is where we think the I2B2 uh, platform sits in. Is It's a foundational layer uh, with, with basic uh, foundational data or technology, and that then uh, different things can come on top of that to make use of it to drive social change. An example of this, to think of it maybe in an analogy, is around GPS, uh, where the government released basic uh, geolocation data that, uh, you know, wherever a device was, they could target you or you could locate you with to a level of precision that was then useful in the marketplace. And then from that came a whole host of um, really interesting uh, applications of that. And so the I2B2 uh, platform and the consortium, it's open, it's available, are all uh, key levers for us and why we're excited about the, the partnership and where we see it fitting in. And then the last bucket there on the right, we then want to overlay a portfolio of projects, if you will, that are different sizes and ranges um, that then target white space and disruptive technologies in healthcare, education, and economic opportunity. And you can see some of the partners there below uh, that we uh, have in our current portfolio. And obviously, TGen is a, is a, is a tier one of those and a long-term partnership. Um, and so we're excited uh, to work with, with you all and TGen uh, going forward. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Ken. And, and I know we're well at time, Diane and Rudy. So I'll yield and stop sharing. Um, and we, you can continue. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, excellent um, in introduction, I think, an overview for us all. Um, can you see my screen now? Uh, yep, the AI yeah. Working Group. Yes. Yeah, so um, we're going to do, I have two more things. I, this, I just want to introduce you. We've got this um, question here, and if uh, anyone would like to post their thoughts uh, here, in, and uh, again, if you uh, save this link uh, or the number there. Uh, you can come back later and uh, this will be up for two days uh, and we'll add this as a, part of the summary. Um, and then uh, what I'd like to do then is go to the last um, mentee survey question and ask if there's any questions uh, out there. Um, <clears throat> the um, I'll take the first one here. Uh, we're um, uh, the the tra this is a question about the Transmart 17.2. Um, there there definitely is some some interest, um, you know, in, in a few of the large uh, a couple of large users in Europe, and so we felt that it was uh, important to see if we can uh, look in and see how to maybe bring these branches back together. Um, and uh, we're just exploring. We're not putting a lot of effort uh, at all at this point. And and you know, part of the assessment is you know how important stuff is, but uh, some of the use cases that are, are covered in the 17.2 uh, were things funded actually originally by the foundation for longitudinal studies, and um, it's just been believed that it's worth worth the time to to take a look at see what we can do there. Um, I'd like to open up. Anybody has questions about um, anything that that uh, David and uh, or the, the TGen folks presented? Please post them here. I know we're at the top of the hour, and people have to run. Um, <clears throat> if you think of questions later, again, I said this is going to be up for two more days and uh, we'll try to get back, you know, we'll get some answers posted along with the, um, the, pre the presentation when we pushed it out. And I did get the okay, recording going, so yeah. <laughs>
Okay. Thank you, David, so much for, uh, for the presentation. Diane, any closing comments? Or maybe she's had to go. I think, um, I think that Sean had a, a comment, Rudy. I don't know if you can unmute him for a second. He's not um, muted, I don't think. Uh, let me find him. I saw him. See him either. I don't even see him here. I think he's not on. Okay, he must have. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Uh, Sean, can you try talking now? All right, I know we're at the end of, of yeah. an hour or so. Okay, well, next time we can we can definitely uh, pull him in. Um, I just, I wanted to just thank um, all the folks from uh, Dell and TGen for their uh, participation today and certainly their, um, their support um, of the foundation. And um, I hope everyone registers for our conference and um, have a wonderful day. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Look forward to it. Yep.